Okay, we've got to take a little time to talk about what are called complex substituents. And a complex substituent is simply a substituent that is not uh, a straight chain. It itself is branched, coming off that parent chain. Uh, if we look at the molecule below here, so if we find the longest continuous chain, we'll get that parent chain delineated here. So from this branch point, whether I go left or down, it's equivalent. I'll just pick to the left. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And it turns out we can get a longer carbon chain if we continue off to the right rather than going up at that branch point. So seven, eight, nine, and then whether I go down or off to the right, same diff in this case, I'll just pick off to the right, and there's 11 carbons. So this is going to be some form of undecane as a parent chain. We've got a couple of simple substituents off here. So just straight little two carbon chains. We know we call those ethyl groups now. So, but the substituent we have right up top here, this is not anything simple. It itself has branches. Now we see it's got a total of one, two, three, four, five carbons, but it's not a simple pentyl group. It's not just a straight five carbon chain. And so it turns out there's a couple different ways to approach this. For some of the smaller ones, they have common names, uh, but for the large ones, they don't, and you simply got to go with a systematic name. And I'm, we're going to start with those systematic names first. So, and rule number one is to label the carbon directly attached to the parent chain, this guy, as carbon number one. Okay, and starting from there, number through to the longest continuous chain you can find. So if he's number one, going off to the left rather than right will get me a longer chain, and then whether I go up from here or off to the left, I get a three carbon chain. And so as a result, this is some form of propyl group we'll find out in a little bit so with a couple of branches coming off of it so let's move on to rule number two so rule number two deals with identifying the substituents attached to that longest chain and in this case we've got just a couple of simple methyl groups attached so and in this case because there's two of them we are going to say dimethyl as part of the name so and we're also going to use these chain locators so here uh, one's at carbon one and one's at carbon two of the substituent and so we're going to say something akin to one comma two dash dimethyl let's move on to rule number three so let's put the name of this complex substituent all together here so rule number three talks about naming the substituents in alphabetical order this should sound familiar naming a complex substituent is a lot like just naming an alkane so the substituent itself has a parent chain sort of of itself uh, and then has uh, its own substituents coming off of it so it's kind of like a substituent with substituents and we go to name it as such in this case uh, we know this thing's a propyl group it has a couple methyls so and we use the normal chain locators so one and two for where those methyl located we say one two dimethyl and then we simply just follow it off with propyl now notice we don't say one two dimethyl propane we say one two dimethyl propyl because the whole thing is still just one big substituent so now let's see how we put that together and name the entire compound uh, that we've got before us. So now let's put this all together here. Uh, as we go to name the entire compound, we've just got the longest chain, which is undecane. We'll list all the substituents in alphabetical order with a little bit of twist here. So keep in mind, we've got these couple of ethyl groups here. Those are alph you know, alphabetized under E for ethyl. So, but our complex substituent here, we'll find out we've got to put it in parentheses in the name. And whatever the first letter is, it's going to get alphabetized by, even if it's like part of di, tri, tetra. Normally we wouldn't do this with, you know, normal substituents, but for complex, the first letter in the name of the complex substituent, that's how it's alphabetized for this systematic way. Uh, so in this case, we got to name this, and dimethylpropyl, being alphabetized under D, comes before ethyl in the alphabet. And so the first thing we're going to say is 1, 2, dash, dimethylpropyl. So, and as a complex division, it goes in parentheses. And the reason we do that is there's just numbers all over the place here. We can see that this is attached to carbon number six in the main chain. So we're going to designate then their six, one, two dimethylpropyl. Without the parentheses, we might just get confused what all these numbers actually mean. So if you also see, we've got those ethyl groups at carbon three and then at carbon nine. So the next thing we're going to say is dash three comma nine dash diethyl. And then finally the parent chain, which is undecane. Cool, that's how you incorporate complex substituents into the overall name of the compound.